My name's Steph Thompson, I work at CCSR, um, and this talk today is a bit of an overview of Qualitative Comparative Analysis, or QCA. I'm going to try and give you an idea of what it is, how you could use it, whether it's useful to you in your research. So, just to give me an idea, by way of a show of hands, how many people here have ever heard of QCA before? Okay. So not very many. And actually, that's, that's usual. Normally, when I go to conferences, you get about three people. So I'm really heartened to see so many people here. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and give you a short answer, and I'm going to try and unpick this answer throughout the presentation. So what is QCA? Well, the short answer is that it's a systematic case-based method for analyzing data. Um, and to use it, you've got to try and understand your material and your data set as sets and analyze the relationship between those sets. Generally what you are interested in doing is finding out which factors or configurations of factors are necessary or sufficient for a given outcome. So that all seems quite in involved and it's and certainly a different kind of way of expressing research aims than we're used to maybe in qualitative work or in more or advanced quantitative stuff. But hopefully by the end of this presentation, that, sent, that statement will make a bit more sense to you than it possibly does at the moment. So in the running order today, I'm going to go through how you might conceptualize data sets. That's not really intuitive at all. And that's a big stumbling block for people who want to use QCA. If they read books about it, they don't really understand how it would relate to their own work. Secondly, I just want to introduce some of the terminology associated so we saw already necessary sufficiency. Those are not things you normally hear in research. Um, and there's quite a lot of terminology that comes from the logic that underpins QCA. So it's formal logic from maths. A lot of the terminology survives and you might not be familiar with that if you haven't got a background in those issues. And sometimes that can be quite off-putting when you're trying to understand what's happening. Thirdly, I want to explore how QCA helps us to see the relationships between condition sets, so that's things that represent attributes of your case, and the outcome, whether the case does or doesn't achieve an outcome, or to what degree it achieves that outcome. And that's what QCA does, it helps you to understand how those factors or conditions relate to the outcome. And finally, I want to be clear about how this differs from standard statistical methods. Okay. Um, before I move on, a lot of people do think that QCA is a sort of stats light or an easy version, a way to do statistics without having to learn it. It's not at all. They are very different things. So I'd just be wary of using it in that way if you, if you feel like statistics is overwhelming or difficult. If those are the questions you're trying to answer, those are the methods you should be trying to use. This is trying to do something really different. And actually, it's quite a bit more complicated than people give it credit for. So it's important not to view it as an easy option. So, firstly, how do we conceive of things as sets? What sorts of things are people studying here? What sorts of areas? Just shout out what you're researching. Criminology. Criminology. So what sorts of things are you looking at? Okay, so like rehabilitation of offenders, whether or not somebody can be rehabilitated, to what extent they could be rehabilitated. Any others? Okay, well, I won't, I won't make you say, but QCA, you can use it for a variety of things. So we might have, might be interested in Fred, studying people, might be interested in studying countries like France. And the question you have to ask yourself before you begin is, how can I represent these? These are cases. How do I represent these as configurations of sets? What do I know about these things? How can I represent these as sets? Well, we can do that in a few ways. But it's important that we use sets that tell us something useful. So, Fred, he's a member of the set of men. I've decided that he's a member of the set of English people. He's also a member of the set of adults. And France is a member of the set of European countries, the set of democratic countries. If all the countries I'm studying are all European, there's no need to say France is a member of a European, set of European countries. It doesn't tell me anything. If I'm just looking at Europe, that's useless, basically. It doesn't tell us anymore. So you've got to understand that these are attributes, things that you're interested in, that are useful in your research. And you want 
the cases that you have represented to differ in whether they are or are not members of these sets or the degree to which they're members. That's how you exploit the method to tell you what is or isn't causing something to happen. But I could go a bit further here and say Fred is a member of the set of English adult men. Now that might seem like one set, but really it's a conjunction of sets. It's three sets. The space in which all those three sets overlap is where Fred sits. Sometimes it's easy to think about this in physical terms. So if you imagine you could move physically move all your cases around in space and you had a massive room and you could draw on the floor what the sets were and you could push them around and put them in the right place. That's what we're doing here. We're understanding this as space carved up into dimensions or sets and we're moving our things and categorizing them according to what attributes they have. So similarly, France is a, set of Euro a member of the set of European democratic countries. Again, that's just a conjunction of two sets. So these last two are how we would represent them, how we might talk about them when we're writing it up. But it's important to remember that they represent three different sets coming together in an intersection. And before we, we go any further, it's important to note that these sets, and some of them are a bit difficult to classify. So the set of men, for the research that I'm doing here, it, theoretically, the set of men would be biological sex, so that's quite easy to determine. But the set of adults is less easy to determine. What constitutes an adult? How do we decide whether something's in the set of adults or not in the set of adults? It's quite a difficult thing. And that's a calibration question. Sometimes QCA gets accused of being too subjective and requiring too much researcher input. But anything where you calibrate requires researcher input, whether it's statistics, whether it's qualitative work. And this is just an example of it. So we've got to understand that calibration is really important. I don't want my set of adults to misclassify people as not being adults when they are adults, or to say that some children are adults, or to just have no members. That means that it's not working properly to distinguish my cases.